Board of Trustees meeting for January uh, 22nd. Um, first item on the agenda is to call to order, so that's what I'm doing, calling to order. It's pretty unusual in a big room like this. It's, uh, I'm glad everybody's here. So, um, there any, uh, any revisions to the agenda this evening that anybody can see? We welcome the, the uh, town select board to let have a few items that they want to discuss and clarify with us. Um, apparently, weather or flu have been influenced a few of them, so we have three gentlemen here this evening. Joel Clark, chairman of the board, um, Mr. Gilmack, and uh, David Jessica. We are town manager. So, um, so if there's no reviews for the agenda, uh, the third item on our agenda this evening is to approve and accept the minutes from Monday, January 8th meeting, 2018. Have a copy of that in the packet. What's your pleasure? I would make the motion that we accept the minutes of Monday, January 8th. And I'll second. <clears throat> so the motion has been made and seconded to approve and accept the village trustee meeting uh, minutes from January 8th. Uh, discussion on those? Yeah, what, what happened on item four, the answers to the question that we had about the Cross Machine Company and BAU Hopkins. Somebody was going to look at that. I forgot. All right. <coughs> Any idea, Lynn? Um, cross machine is what we use uh, up at the hydro plant. Okay. That was probably, that was I believe the trash rate. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think there was a removal of the trash rate in Rio's fault. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. What's BAU Hopkins? That I'm not sure about. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. They want. Sorry, Gene. That's okay. Nobody else asked. Um. Any other discussion? Questions? On the minutes? If not, all those in favor, approve and accept in the minutes. Signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, <coughs> motion is carried. Uh, item number four, approve and accept the village warrants through January 19th, 2018. You also have a copy of those in your packet. Put your budget on the warrants. And will they be approved? I'll second it. Motion has been made and seconded to approve and accept the village warrants. Uh, any discussion? Questions on the warrants? Mr. President, I have a question on this. Warrant number one, check 76, 824, second item on the first page. Cosdale, is that equipment or is that training? No, that's the software company that we use for our billing and financials, and that's our annual maintenance agreement. <clears throat> Annual maintenance agreement, which is hardware and no, it's just the software support just and software upgrades. Support. Seems like a lot of money. Thank you. Yep. Anything else? Any other questions? If not, all those in favor of the motion to approve and accept the warrants, signify the same one. Aye. Uh, and that motion is also approved. Uh, item number five, sign the hydro bond sales documents. I assume you're going to have some of those. Diane? Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is the documents for the uh, financing of the <coughs> rubber dam. And the Vermont Bond Bank usually only goes out in the spring, but they had enough financings that they did a winter sale. And these are the um, documents to sign 
to for the loan agreements. So everywhere there is a tag, <coughs> you guys should be signing. So if there's one that's just asking for the chair of the board and for Diane, but most of them are um, for the full board to sign. Um, you guys have any questions on Berlin on that? Or? No, we've been over it. We've already been around it a couple times. Um, okay, item number six on the agenda, on the updated agenda, is uh, the town select board is here to discuss items of mutual interest. And they had given us a, a program, but uh, unfortunately they don't have a, a quorum, right? No, but we certainly can we still discuss the items. And yeah. We just won't take any action on anything tonight. We'll bring right. back the information and share it with the other board members. Okay. okay. So, that being Excuse said, do we start on the bottom line? Oh, there's four lines. Yep, just start on the top line. So I guess the, yep. the uh, first topic to discuss with the right? Yes, although I would like to just put in a little plug about the flood, because I know we got flood updates there, but okay. I, I think this is the first time we've been together uh, since yeah. the incidents about 10 days ago. Oh, and it is just, it's, it's occurring anyway. Right. The first meeting. That's yeah. right. And uh, just from a, a town's perspective, uh, we're very fortunate and it was great to see the cooperation and the way it's structured, uh, you know, having an emergency coordinator who also works full time, Reggie, yeah. um, Chief Stell, and, and his uh, deputy, I guess is what that position's called, and then and Chief Gerard, and watching everybody in action during the, the course of those couple of days from a town's perspective, we're very fortunate that have such qualified individuals coordinate that response for uh, all the members of SWAM. It's great to be here and be part of it and, uh, and see it in action because uh, I sleep a lot better after seeing just what we can do in an emergency. Can I just add to that? Of course you can. <laughs> uh, with that being said about the local people, the, lo the local talent, it was amazing to see how much help we got from the state. I mean, not that everybody doesn't get that much help, but they came together with our local officials and really got the job done. And, and be on site that afternoon, yeah. Saturday afternoon, yeah. 3, 3 15 and to have who we had here was pretty impressive. Kudos to the, the state agencies for, for responding fairly rapidly and helping us out. <coughs> but, uh, so I know we have it on our agenda too, but uh, I'd just like to add a little bit to that. Uh, so, having uh, now having weekly meetings with the with the uh, National Weather Service, uh, basically the river rose ten feet uh, according to the flood gauges in Berkshire in in the village. Uh, there was some conversation about uh, you know had our bag been fully deployed, this wouldn't have flooded like that. And uh, all uh, all answers are geared towards it would have happened the same uh, because the plant can only suck in 200 2,000 CFS, and uh, the river gauge showed X's on the CFS, so it was plus uh, 100,000 CFS of water coming in. So uh, I think at its height, the river reached 13 point something feet. Uh, so it was pretty dramatic. Uh, you know, we talk about global warming. Uh, this may be the new norm that happens during these emergencies like this, so we need to be very diligent. I think uh, the first notification that we got was via our pagers, and it wasn't long after that I got a call from the Vermont Emergency Management uh, watch officer at 2 in the morning, Rich Cogliano, and he says, Reggie, you know what's going on? I go, yeah, I kind of do. Uh, we're right in the middle of it. but. Uh, when you guys were deployed out there and, and I showed up to meet with you folks, it's like we had the pucker factor that river was coming in around us. When you guys made the call to, to bail, that was the right call. Uh, 
and just to reiterate, it worked well. We had uh, Assistant Chief Cross was out in the field running operations and Timmy running this group in here and I didn't have to, other than feed you guys information on what assets were coming, it, uh, it worked really well. And the difference between this one and the 98 ice storm was I didn't have to go hunt for assets. They were calling me all day long saying, we have this for you, what do you need? Uh, you know, we had, uh, well, Governor Phil Scott showed up Saturday and he called me every day since then uh, just to check in and see how things were going and if we needed anything else. Uh, Joe Flynn uh, from the, the Secretary of ALT, uh, they were providing assets that uh, would normally be built to the, the community and it was on their network. So, National Guard was deployed and uh, I can remember the 98 ice storm, it was an act of Congress to try to get them here and it was, it was phenomenal, they were here within hours. And, you know, so it's, uh, it's nice to see that, uh, I hate to say that the state has learned over the years, but boy, they, the help that we got was phenomenal. So. I think we've all learned over the years, not just the state. <laughs> yeah. I think it's been, what, you guys put me in that office like 22 years ago, and I haven't forgiven you since. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still there. Oh, yeah, still there. Um, really, so, this is a fight for that. Okay, uh, anything else? Anybody else want to talk about the flood, as long as we're on that subject? The audience? Ron? Yeah, I'd just like to say as a private citizen without any authority or responsibility but one who lives on the river, how proud I was to see the way everybody came together to honor the nation. Responded just like that. It was amazing. It made you feel real good and also real safe. We appreciate it. So 96 homes were inspected within the community. So I, I think some of this may be high gates as well that was yes. involved in it. So 96, two of which were undetermined, so they weren't able to get, gain access. 14 were un, unaccept, uh, inaccessible, that people didn't want the place to be inspected. 44 were not affected at all. Zero were destroyed. And these are FEMA's words, so. Uh, two were major damage. Uh, 24 were minor damage, which means water in the residence or water in the basement and 10 others were affected in one way or another, whether it's uh, electrical or whatever. So uh, we have a list of the homeowners that were affected. Uh, so you know that uh, our local uh, way station is taking materials that they want to uh, dispose of there. They're taking that free of charge. And uh, so they have a list of all the names, so people try to go in and dump their stuff for free with they got their, your name. So if you're not on the list, don't bring it up. Uh, we're getting, trying to get some more water well test uh, kits. There's multiple donations coming through via the churches also. So there's more to come on the donations and stuff. Yeah. Did you want to add? Yeah, yeah can I add two, two items? I'm Catherine Dimitrick with Northwest Regional Planning. <clears throat> In terms of individual recovery, I talked to Bob Constantino this afternoon. He's with Agency of Human Services. And the Vermont Long-Term Recovery Fund is going to be assigning case managers to all the folks who had damage in their homes to um, help them connect to financial resources through the Vermont Long-Term Recovery Fund to help cover their unmet needs. One thing that's really important that I didn't know until I talked to him is that um, the Vermont Long-Term Recovery Fund will only pay for expenses that haven't been uh, incurred yet by the homeowner. So they won't reimburse a homeowner for something that they've already done. So if a homeowner has some real financial struggles and unmet needs, it's best if they can delay doing something they might try to do right away so that they can get some potential funding assistance with the long-term recovery fund. The case managers will be a mix of people from the Red Cross, from some um, church organizations in Vermont, and then our AmeriCorps, VISTA staff member at the Regional Planning Commission will be a case manager as well. 
So starting in this next week, folks will be contacted from that list of the affected properties um, to, to get them connected to financial assistance. And then the other thing I wanted to uh, mention to you is as the home repairs get started, because these affected properties, um, minor isn't as good as it sounds, as you know, <laughs> it's just the <clears throat> definition. Um, as they go through the repair process, they're all going to need zoning permits. Because they are in the floodplain, they need a permit even for interior work. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a couple of issues that I just wanted to put on your radar for you to think about. And if you want to move forward on them, we'll help you do it. In these circumstances, a lot of times municipalities will uh, temporarily waive the permit fees for properties that were damaged in the disaster. And then in the Swanson bylaws, some of the regulations for different permits require you to go before the um, board as well as just getting a zoning administrator permit. You could temporarily waive that process so the permit can happen faster for people and it's just a zoning administrative permit rather than going to the board to get through a public hearing process. And then for the two homes that had major damage, if, they're, if the cost of the damage is considered substantial, which is more than 50%, depending upon where they're located, they may not be able to rebuild unless you modify your regulations. So that's something we're going to really need to pay close attention to and make sure we can help the homeowners address that situation and avoid it at all. So if the town is the select board that has the authority to make those decisions, and if it's something the select board wants to move forward on to modify the process and make the fees, we can help you do the paperwork to get ready to do that. So, Catherine, is this assistance in addition to like people that have flood insurance, or is that does the flood insurance multiply this assistance? Um, the Vermont Long Term Disaster Recovery Fund, I have the name a little bit wrong, but it, it fills unmet needs. So even if you have flood insurance, I know some of the folks with flood insurance have super high deductibles. Yeah. So they could still end up with a huge unmet need that they're not financially able to take care of. And this is a nonprofit fund that can help fill that gap. Mm -hmm. It was set up originally after Irene and then um, remains open to uh, kept going through donations. Uh, yeah, a couple of uh, items uh, in relation to what uh, Catherine just talked about and also on the uh, water test kits. Uh, uh, today, um, the health officer, Dan Gilbert, who's also a selectman, I can't be here tonight because he's working, uh, called me and asked me to uh, contact Heidi about, uh, he thought that they had received some test kits up there. Uh, and in the morning I called. Uh, Jeff told the Highgate health officer that at that time they had not yet received any. Later in the afternoon, he called me back and told me that they had received 15, but they have 20 houses that are um, affected by the flood and will probably need more. I, I guess the, the thought was that they might get too many and then be able to give some to uh, to Spartan. So I contacted uh, Stacy Carpenter, who's the um, uh, the contact with the Vermont Department of Health explained the situation to her and asked her to, uh, Amy and I, the zoning administrator, uh, counted the, the homes and there are 31 homes in Swan that have wells that were surrounded by um, the flood water. Uh, so I told um, Stacy Carpenter that we should have at least 31 on hand in case everyone wants to test it. And, and it would be at the uh, uh, it would be a test kit A, is what they call it. So normally a fourteen dollar fee, <coughs> and then the state would be willing to waive that fee uh, for the people that are uh, in need of a test kit. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to hear back from her tomorrow, and whether she could round up uh, some more uh, of these test kits from the state. Uh, she's based in St. Albans, uh, so that's that's where that stands at this point. Uh, with regard to the zoning, Amy and I are already on that. Uh, she uh, requested uh, a fee waiver, which is on the agenda tonight for the board, but since we don't have a quorum, um, we, the board can't vote on it, but it will be on the next uh, select board agenda on February 6th. Hey, She's, I, yeah, I want to jump in there. We're not going to wait to February 6th. Uh, we will probably put a meeting together for tomorrow as part of this, and we can have an emergency meeting and just get this done. Yeah. So, 
uh, we're going to have a majority tonight and we're going to take action on it, but there's no reason that we can't get together tomorrow and, and, and just get that done so we can waive the fees. And then wasn't aware of that uh, DRB here in waiver, but if you have some paperwork that kind of shows what we need to do, then we'll be glad to do that too. You know, also, Amy has written a letter um, that's going to be going out to all the flood victims. Um, explaining the fact that they have to apply for uh, the zoning permit to do their work. So that's already in process. She was waiting uh, to get word on the, the waiver, uh, but hopefully it wouldn't happen tonight, but didn't. So she could put that in the letter also when she sends it out, uh, we notify them about their zoning uh, fees. <coughs> and um, with regard to the 50% rule and flood regulations, if someone is property is impacted uh, by 50% or more of the fair market value. If they rebuild, they have to do it in accordance uh, with the 100-year floodplain regulation. So the, the property would have to be elevated to at least the 100-year uh, floodplain mark um, to rebuild it. If it's less than that, they could, they could repair and rebuild uh, where it is right now. Um, whether that can be waived or not, I don't know because uh, the 50% rule, because uh, the idea for that is to try to keep properties from being damaged by flood again in the future. So um, I'm not sure I'd have to check the team on that if they could just, uh, if, if it could be a way to allow them to build back the over But uh, uh, I'm a little skeptical about whether they would do that. <coughs> Yeah, that's, that's all I have for now. Okay. Well, one more thing. Uh, I was here uh, Friday uh, when they had the multiple agencies um, Friday morning for a while. And I would say that the people that showed up from the swan, from the flood victims, had the ultimate praise for the fire department um, for, for going in there and uh, rescuing them from the home. So I think uh, the fire department just took a lot of kudos for the work they did wading through chest deep water to get these people out. Yes, exactly. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to applaud you. Team effort. It was a team effort. That's all I can do. I can't, I'm not going to take all the credit. These guys did just as hard as whatever. So everybody pulled together and we got it done. Hopefully we won't have a rerun tomorrow. <laughs> Adam's going to do this thing again. So the weather report. No, it's not. What? So, just, <coughs> so the National Weather Service said today that no, we won't have a rerun of that. No. Uh, the river is like two point something feet right now. And with the rains, a lot of a lot of that snow melt is gone because of the 60 degree weather and plus two inches of rain. And as everybody knows, we get our water from JP in that area. So the National Weather Service says we should not be in any jeopardy uh, during this short event. Have they, have they ever, Butch Patch, have they ever seen the, uh, seen it jammed up like this? Nobody in town has seen it, have they? They, ha they haven't uh, said that, but there's also other areas in the state that said the same thing. They've never seen anything like this before. So. I mean, that's the scary part. So. Like you said before, we're hoping this isn't the norm, the new norm. This is it. Okay, uh, <coughs> you fellas from Slight Board, you want any other questions answered? Do you want to take the lead on this, or? Probably. Sure. I mean, I, I think the. Oh, the item that kicked the meeting off was was just to come here and talk with you and get kind of what the latest was regarding uh, the purchase of the fire trucks. We had uh, two meetings ago. Uh, several members of the fire department came over and uh, Pete gave us a great briefing. Um, we asked a lot of questions and uh, then we had a follow-up discussion at our next meeting. And then uh, folks said, you know, let's come talk right to the trustees and. Uh, and hear right from them, and, and Lynn uh, offered to David um, any you know anything that you know we had questions about regarding purchase uh, and so on. And uh, looks like she's put together some numbers. And I know she's been working with uh, 
with Kathy as well. So just thought we'd come here and and, and get a discussion going. Um, and there's not really tons to discuss. I think what we're trying to get and, and looking at what she's provided. It's in the packet. It describes the three different options you're looking at in terms of the purchase, the you know the terms and stuff. So it gives us a great idea of what we're talking about for impact <coughs> and stuff. And then it gives us a chance to go out there and. Uh, Talk with uh, and answer any questions that we might get from uh, members of the town. I, as stated in a previous meeting, Tim and I told you I was going to get you the article, so I brought it tonight. Um, you know, from the questions we asked Pete, and then looking at the numbers after with Kathy and prep for the next meeting, we got a lot better understanding, and it's nowhere near as large as we originally thought it was. So what we want to do is make sure we've got the right information be able to talk to this if any voters ask us about it. I'm a big fan and I understand that these trucks are getting old and need to be replaced. So I want to be on record as supporting truck replacement and just wanted to get the numbers and stuff and, and kind of a general discussion, not anything more than that. Yeah. Go ahead. So uh, Lynn and I were talking about this the other day and uh, she actually had brought it up that you know, I'll leave it up to you folks if you think it's a good idea. But when we have when we have joint budgets like this with the fire department and the police department, it would probably be in our best interest if we hold joint meetings. So so rather than them having to go to two meetings, we're in one meeting and everybody's hearing the same thing and we do it do it together in, in one room. And that way we get ahead of you know, different articles and different meetings and you know all the questions are answered right up front. I, I think it'd be great. And, and I want to, there was something stated at one of our meetings about having a discussion in here about how we break up the fire department's budget. That's a dead issue. That is not going to be a, a point of discussion uh, if we're going to go with in the meeting here. We talked about that at our last meeting and we've seen the light. Uh, and the ones who brought that up said no. We're not touching that, and that's a good. That's uh, not something we need to do. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of great cooperation going on, and that's the spirit we want to keep moving. Do you, you got anything you want to add on that? No, because I think I pretty much covered. I mean, do you guys have any questions that I missed in the memo, or if you have any questions about what I wrote, um, you know, just let me know. But. Um, you know, basically, I guess in a nutshell, is um, in the budget this year is the truck replacement amount. Um, the last truck was paid off in December of 17. So to keep the budget the same, we put that same payment amount in the budget. That'll go into um, the savings account and it'll be used as a down payment for the trucks um, when we get them. But if they get a positive vote in March, we, we can't order the truck for at least 30 days after because there's a rescission period on our budget. So it will be ordered in the spring and it's almost a whole year. So we aren't looking at actually getting the trucks and taking out a note until sometime in 2019. And then depending on the financing vehicle that we end up using, the bond bank doesn't have your first principal payment due until the following year. So we'd be interest only in 19. Um, but if we get a better rate, I'll go to the bond bank, I'll go to several banks in the area, wherever I get the best deal. And I look at, at the end of the term, what's the cheapest route to go? Um, because like, like I said in here, a lease to me is not an option for these fire trucks because the interest rate, the payment amount looks good. But when you look at the fact that over the course of, you know, a 15 or a 12 year note, you're going to pay the same amount. Whereas with a loan, your interest goes down as you pay down principal. Um, so when you look at the bottom line, it's cheaper to go with a loan. Um, so I'll look at what's our best deal, and that's what I'll present to the trustees to go with. Um, we've used the Bond Bank, we've used um, People's United, Union Bank, are all ones that we've financed equipment through in the last few years. Um, you know, so that's how I'll do it. And um, you know, I did on the last page of that memo is a couple of different scenarios, and. Um, you know, the impact of what the impact would be. But, you know, we all have, we still have you know, the 58000 in the budget. So when you're looking at a $145,000 bond payment, you know, 58000 of that's already in the budget. 
So it's the difference. You'll see like an additional 90,000 that is split between everybody in the community. Right. Does that answer your question? That you were asking yeah, I asked if the funds that we already give to the for the replacement fund was being used in the purchase of the yeah. to pay. The It'll only be one year. Well, depending on the scenario, if we go to the bond bank mm -hmm. um, in 2019, I would still put you know yeah. that same 58 in the budget probably, yeah. and the estimated interest payment for that first year is about 19,000 because yeah. it's only a partial year. So the difference of that would go into the savings to be used going forward. But, but if we just say we finance it for 10 years. So are we using that money for 10 years consecutive that comes out of the budget to pay well, the payment on this? Is that um, awesome the fifth, right now, they have very little in their savings account because of mm -hmm. the last truck purchase. Mm -hmm. um, so there'll be 58,000 that'll go for it. So if they, you know, with financing the truck, what they'll do is we'll finance the majority of it. We'll write a check for 58,000 to the vendor mm -hmm. plus the loan proceeds. Mm -hmm. And then, but in the budget, we're going to be have to be raising an additional ninety some odd thousand. So the fifty eight thousand has been in the budget, and the new equipment replacement fund line item will go from that fifty eight to you know one forty five ish um, if we do the twelve and the fifteen year repayment schedule. I didn't watch you. Sorry, but yeah. So so if you're back to the question. So then every year. That fund that's there every year that the taxpayers give for the replacement fund, every year that money's gonna be taken and put towards these new trucks for the next ten years. For, it'll be used for the loan payment, yes. For the loan, okay, that's what I was just trying like to it's, okay. Just like it's been all okay. along. It's just yeah. gonna the amount. It's not what you're saying. It's used for right. something else. Is I guess right. my question. The amount, the amount's going up. Yeah. Does that does that mean then that we will have? A replacement fund for the next truck for, right for my descendants correct right and right now we that don't really have, have a replacement fund we've had a, when I, you know we've had a replacement fund in the past because we had gaps of time between truck purchases this time we're basically we're finishing one truck purchase up in 2017 and we're pretty much going right into a new one so we don't have time to build that bank account back up because that bank account it doesn't have a lot in it right now, and we'll add the fifty-eight thousand to it at the end, you know, this year once taxes come in. But that would be the end of it, right? I, I mean, what will happen is that let's say you go with a twelve and fifteen-year yeah. option at the end of year twelve, you're probably going to purchase another vehicle with whatever, yeah. you know, if everyone yeah. stays with that amount. Is the way right. I see it. You just right. you can't kind of. It's kind of like us buying our trucks. We can't quite get ahead of. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you, you might continue to be getting along to, to do the purchase. Right. So the burden for the trucks 10, 15 years from now will be on the voters then without having support from the past. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm in favor of that. The fire, the replacement fund is going to discontinue in 2019 or 2020. Yeah, but didn't we? Didn't we? Yeah, yeah. The it's idea of the replacement fund was to years that there wasn't a truck payment, uh -huh. we would be taking money and putting it away. Right. Or when we are going to have one. So it's, 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 I understand there's, that we're not putting money against, you know, 15 years from now trucks, but um, the idea of that replacement fund was to was to put money away on years when we didn't have a payment. And since we do have a payment, let's use that money to pay for the current truck. Mm -hmm. And when we have years, like we've had um, a few recently, we've had years where they've had un unexpended tax revenues. So when we've actually had less expenses than we've taken in uh, in revenue, that ballot item is on the, on the town meeting ballot to move the money into the replacement fund. Some years it might only be like $1,500, but we still, you know, we put it on there and we've always had it approved. We move that money into that savings account. So it's a way of keeping the tax rate stable and it's not roller coastering, um, but it also puts a little bit away. So you're, you're not building it by a lot, but you're still building it a little bit. Sometimes it would be nothing. 
that correct? I mean, right now, um, there'll be about $15,000 that'll be able to move forward. And that's because these guys have had some uh, tractor trailer accidents that we've been paid for this year. And that's really the only reason that we've got the extra this year. But still, it'll move into the truck replacement fund after town meeting day. So the replacement fund, based on that scenario, will increase a little bit, perhaps some years and some years not. Right, right. But unless we impact the tax base, um, we aren't going to be able to dramatically grow that without burdening the taxpayers more than just those two trucks. Instead of trying to put the money in and be able in 10 years to buy a truck, you, just, you get in the truck now doing it through a loan and right. using that fund to pay a loan instead. Right, right. And it's got to be because of the age of the fleet that that's where you're at right now. Instead of building up a balance of money on truck, you're going to buy your pants to the truck that you've got. Right. <clears throat> Any other questions, Mark? I don't. No. So, just one question, Clayboy. So, what's going to be on the ballot? We talked about that. How is it going to be worded? How is it going to be worded? Yeah. I think we dropped that up. Yeah. I mean, is it just is you just asking the taxpayers to vote on the approved two fire trucks, or which term? I guess. Yeah. We did. Um, I mean, I ain't got three options here, but I, I, probably the term I believe that we've been talking about was the 12 year for engine three and a 15 year for the ladder truck. That was my idea, really. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I wouldn't want to go any longer than that. But, but the action item is to buy not just one truck, but the, 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 yeah. the proposed lot of them. I Some will be paid for some of the others, but. It's not like you're going to buy just one or two, we're going to buy three. We're going to buy two, we place three. Right, yeah. And I, and I guess the way I look at it is if that's where you get on the ballot, until you get all your bank information and everything out, you might adjust all that just a Right, because I think it was worded for a term not to exceed 15 years. Oh, I see. So that we could yeah. do okay. it in two. That's what, that's, what, that's what he's trying to get at. But the option to buy only one truck is not there. Right. The option is to buy the two trucks. The way, kind of the way Pete presented two trucks to replace for three. Yeah, I mean, if you guys don't mind. Um, the idea that of why we were proposing the two trucks to, to replace three is so that we were better prepared for 2026 20, when engine one is, uh, will be 20 years old. Again, trying to get caught up to a better better scenario that we aren't waiting too long. Um, so that was, you know, that's the that's the thought process. And if you know, if it's a ten year no, a twelve year no, on the one on the engine, which is the lesser amount, that per, that gives us better prepared in the 2026, 2028 time frame. And to kind of go back, again, yeah, most all of you know that you know I do have a little bit of history in when I was chief. Um, I think where some of your questions from the select board have come in is kind of the way that the wording has been uh, that it was a replacement fund, and that's what I believe the town had put in. And in all reality, that was a payment. It wasn't a replacement fund, it was a payment. Which is exactly what this is. Yeah, I fully understand that. I think we can help explain that piece. Um, we don't actually put it on the ballot. So that was another thing the first night. I was told prior to going in that you know it's something we're putting on the ballot, and it's not the case at all. It's, as you say, you're, you're going to put it on the ballot to buy it, and then when the 2019 budget comes to us, you can say this is what you got. And so again. I, we, we want to have a conversation. It's been an educational process, and uh, as, as I say, you know, we want. I know I, I support it, and other board members may have some varied opinions, and, and some, you know, would be glad to share exactly how to buy it and what to buy and when to buy it. But I think with all the discussion that's taken place, people get more comfortable, and we've got it. 
you guys have got to start replacing them. They're, they're getting old. So and as I've it's said, just going to get more expensive as we go, too. And as I've said many, many times, it's not a want anymore, it's a need. We need to do this. I think to it, Joel, with that, I think when we have those conversations right up front earlier in the you know, earlier in the process where we all meet together, I think that will help with all of that. Too. Well, to say you guys have a ping pong back and forth. Too. Um, that way, the select board may ask questions that the trustees don't think of, and vice versa. And everybody's hearing the questions, and everybody's hearing the answers. Everybody's on the same page. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the, the budgets are you know being hashed out at one point. And... So definitely would like to do that. It makes all sense. All the, all the people with the questions, and all the people that have the. the, the Answers hopefully are in the same room at the same time. We make it go that much smoother. Yeah. Save Absolutely. all of us a lot more time. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys. The other uh, item that made it to the headlines of the uh, messenger was uh, discuss fireworks. <laughs> and that could just be a discussion on buying fire trucks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, I hadn't. Yeah, that's good. The, uh, the fireworks piece, uh, really tonight, just to throw out, we, we want to do something. Uh, we threw some money in a line item in the budget, and we will seek donations if uh, try to do some celebration. There was some mention of the car show, but by the time the car show ends at 3 till it gets dark at that time of year, there's a big gap. So trying to fill that whole gap probably isn't going to work. But if there's some other event that folks can think of, uh, we just want to throw it out there and uh, say let us know. Well, you've got the, the art spectacular that happens on the 25th of August, which coincides pretty much pretty close to our birthday, Reg. Yeah. So, so birthday? What's that? It was August, right? Swan's birthday. <laughs> I know it's up front. I didn't attend the last one. <laughs> the town birthday is, I think, the village is in November. But the community. Yeah, yeah the Swan. Yeah. yeah, the community one, I think, is in August. And, uh, right, yeah. I know I, I had a discussion with the organizer of the Art Spectacular, and uh, she's concerned with the same thing where you've got this lap. <clears throat> lapse of time, you know, what do we do to fill it in to get to dusk where we can set off the fireworks? So, how about a barbecue? I know some great cooks next door. You know, it could be a whole separate 4th of July thing. It could, it could be, you know, Christmas in the park. What a way to end there when it's dark. Yeah. Lighten, lighten that place up, you know? So, I mean, there's a lot of options. We're just yeah. throwing it out there early so that uh, yeah. we can think about it and, and plan and organize it. If, uh, I know the chamber would love to get on the committee, you know, if we form a you know, school subcommittee. And there's a couple of members in the chamber that would be interested in joining that. So. Okay, so that's what we want to just put out tonight. No answers tonight, but just to get uh, people thinking about it. Give some uh, suggestions. Yeah. Trying, trying to get you know, another community event going. Yeah. I'm trying to increase the participation for Memorial Day. Is the role it was charted? Yeah. So it was August 17th it was charted. Thank you. That's what we did, sir. Are you a new historian? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Google. Google's your name. What else? We, we had the building fees, but we'll take that separately. We'll get one other board member. We already have this meeting warned. We'll get another board member online, and we'll just get that approved tonight. Well, David gave us an idea of what, what was in store for our right? Yeah, we'll do it. And what we'll do it. We'll get and Catherine and get that whatever paperwork we need done. And yeah. The sooner the better, so people right. don't have to deal with that. Okay. I, I would mention uh, 12 April. That uh, Corporal Lord, 100 year um, oh, yeah. commemoration of when he was the first Vermonter killed in uh, World War One. That event is going strong as far as preparation for that. The uh, Vermont National Guard has taken that on. I know it was mentioned in the meeting here, uh, and there was 
my understanding approved to be able to do that in Flatiron Park. Uh, it would be 11 o'clock on that day and would certainly, as we get closer, let you know more of the details, but I'd like as many of the you know, trustees and uh, select board, et cetera, village officials that could be there uh, for the event. It'd be a, about a half an hour event there and then uh, it'll move over to the Swamp Armory for, for a little more. But we'll keep you posted on that. Yeah. I think that's all I have, unless you have something else, James. Nope. Yeah. Appreciate uh, letting us come into your meeting. Thank you. Thank you. We're not done. Okay. Here you stay. You can stay the rest of it. Ron? There's another common item that received message of headlines also. Back in October, we talked about boards separately. Uh, the condition of the historic water fountain in the park and the bandstand. As a result of those discussions in October, there was another meeting in November. There was a committee appointed of uh, key people to, to look into the matter. And also at that time, uh, proposals were submitted by four separate contractors as to what it would cost. They vary quite a bit, each one of them, but we do have four to consider. I would just like some sort of a statement from you, the board or managers, as to what's going to be the next step. Uh, is there enough money in the budget now to cover the cost for repairing both the fountain and the bandstand this coming summer? Good question. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know what the bid amounts are? We do. I did. You have copies? We didn't discuss it publicly at that time, and we don't need to know, I don't think. But you all know, somewhere in the records, it will cost. At least the range of possibilities. I'm not sure where I have it. But you could provide it again if I can't find it. Sure. I still have them on email. I think it's easy. Put it this way. I'll jump in from a town perspective. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, and Ron came to our meeting, and uh, you know we didn't want to get into discussion con contracts, contract amounts, because right now I, I believe, and our board believes, that the village has to take the lead on this, being it's in the park. Um, you know, it's not something uh, that really we spend town money on. That. Or I'll be glad to sit there and, and help out from. You know, engineering advice and all that good stuff. If you want, you know, extra help, but you want to make some money, or I'll help make some money too. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, anyway, um, so the town has kind of backed off a little bit. Other than there was discussion of a committee, and uh, my name got thrown on, and I'll be glad to attend every meeting and stuff. But it's not one that can really take the lead on that we see. And, and if it was going to be something we were taking the lead on and stuff, we would do our own contract and type actions and, and follow the process that we use for that. But, uh, that's where the town is right now. So we did get a bid from one. Uh, we did get a bid that was what we had looked at was a, uh, I don't want to say for a more thorough bid, but had a bid what we were looking for. And Lynn already put it in that, that budget. So if we didn't put in the budget for the bandstand, but the fountain is in the budget. So uh, we would have to look at that. Can you add the sum of, say, no more than $2,000 to that budget to cover the bandstand? Well, that's, that's what I asked. Mm -hmm. Anybody have a figure? No more than. OK, so she's saying, yeah, there's I something. Can, yeah. She I, can, can, yeah. I feel better. I can move some money. To, we've got the, the old swan fund, too that can go for stuff in the park. So we can extend that. Okay, so Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to find Thank you. And now you know about the secret fund. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to find something that, uh, from that grant that Elizabeth is yeah. going through to cover that too. Yeah. That community's living grant. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, we're moving forward, Ron. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>
Thanks for reminding us all. <laughs> he promised he was going to keep reminding me. Yeah. <laughs> See you next month. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be boring now. Okay. Uh, so you fellows all set? Yeah. So the town is set. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you guys. Get some sleep. Huh? <laughs> Maybe we'll need it tomorrow. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. Bye. Uh, okay. Oh, this one's flat. I didn't remember Sunday. Speaking of that, uh, I don't know if anybody read the messenger tonight, but right on the front page, Great we had the uh, citizen of the year for Swanton uh, was Adam Paxman. I'd like to congratulate him. And talk, we're all talking about teams here this evening. And if anybody is a part of a team, not the Red Sox, but any part of a team for the community, uh, Adam is the team player. And uh, we all congratulate Adam for his honor. Yes. That being said, Thank you. also in the messenger tonight, they said that, or I think Brian was stated as saying uh, that Adam has a, a fondness for coin drops. So <laughs> that, that, being, that being said, the seventh item on our agenda this evening, Swanton Missisquoi Valley Lions Club requests a coin drop for Saturday, June 2nd, 2018, with a rain date of Saturday, June 9th. 2018. That's our next item for discussion. I'll make a motion that we approve your request of the Lions Club for 6218 coin drop. I'll put it page 698. And I would second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded uh, to, to approve the uh, Cisco Valley Lions Club's application for coin drop on June 2nd, 2018. Any discussion? They know about the insurance and everything on it. So, okay. Uh, that being said, all those in favor of the motion, so just have a say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Opposed. Okay, so noted. Uh, Item number eight on our agenda, I think we've already covered the update on the Cisco flood, or did you want to add some more? I have right. nothing else on it. I think the the think town we'll helped us out on that one, too. So. Yeah. yeah, they helped with the uh, moving those uh, big stones and stuff. And they also helped uh, <coughs> build a dike around the uh, sewer pump plant, right? Yeah. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so the next item on our agenda is uh, the Dr. 2018 budget as presented. That's the village budget. Uh, Lynn, do you have to uh, make any changes because of the, uh, the, the water fountain and the uh, nope. bandstand? No, I already had enough in there in the bandstand and the fountain, uh, or I had money in there for the fountain, the bandstand. Um, so we've got the swamp fund that we can use, so okay. I don't have to add any additional taxes. All right. All right. Um, so the only, the only changes I've made since the last time you guys saw it, um, the frontage road solar project is now online and generating electricity. So in the revenue for the electric department, there is a credit uh, budgeted for solar credits. Um, just to note, of those solar credits, uh, three of the, this building, the water plant and the sewer plant for the village are all off takers. So we're, see, we're getting some of the benefit of that solar project, even though the electric department is having to pay credits out. So depending on which, if you're a rate payer or a taxpayer, you see benefit, but you also see a hit a little bit. Uh, so no, nothing else changed in the electric department. Um, but on page four, you'll see, it's only coming out to a budget of about a $45,000 profit, which 
isn't a lot when that's the amount that is really supposed to be paying your debt service payments. I'm expecting we're going to be able to get through this year without a rate case, but I would expect we're probably going to have to file for one in 2019. Thank you. I'll make a motion then that we adopt the 2018 budget as presented this evening. I'll second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to approve the 2000, or to adopt the 2018 budget as presented. Uh, I guess we already have the discussion. Uh, that being said, all those in favor of adopting the 2018 budget, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion is carried. And in addition to that, on um, page 12, did you, as we run these with water and sewer, I also run the new, what the rates should be. Yeah. The water fund can get away without a rate increase for this year, but the sewer department, we have not raised rates in that department for a couple of years. Um, we are going to have to raise the rates a little bit. Uh, so we would be, on page 12, it, it lists out, currently right now, um, I want to bring them to 3404 for a fixed rate and a variable rate of $4.10 uh, per thousand dollars. So it's a slight increase over what we're charging right now. You want an overall 2.5% increase? Roughly, yeah. When do you want to put in the uh, rate increase? Um, we usually, like, once you guys adopt it, we're going to have to notice customers. So it would actually be, we wouldn't be able to do it for February 1st, but like March 1st is when we would put it in, in effect. Oh, that's really good. That's fine. Good. As always, you put together a good package. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Okay, uh, any other necessary business? Oh, maybe no. You didn't vote on it. Yeah, discussion. I was wondering if you guys were paying attention. Motion's been made and seconded uh, to adopt the 2018 budget. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. All set now, then, I think. All right. Now, any other necessary business? Necessary. Necessary. Uh, <laughs> <Never did necessary. laughs> Yes. On last year's ballot, there was a line item on there if the voters wanted to continue coin drops or not coin drops. Um, in my opinion, it failed by four votes. So I'm considering putting it back on for this year. I will have an answer at our next meeting okay. on the 29th. Is that too late to put it on in the morning? No, I have it on there now. It's a rough draft, but okay. it just takes a minute to take it off. Okay, so, good. You just let me know. Okay, thank you. Because <clears throat> we're going to meet hmm? next week. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll have an answer by next week. Okay. <clears throat> I just wanted to comment again on Adam's award. That was pretty clear. It was pretty nice. Thank you. Rich? Yeah, you have not. I have no. <laughs> you have nothing. I uh, so Elizabeth couldn't be here tonight, but she sent all of you folks that uh, that consideration for that grant for the Citizens Institute on Rural Design, the CIRD, <clears throat> to review that. And it's going to be kind of like, you know, it comes around kind of like the community visit, but you get uh, some interested parties uh, together and have a discussion about. You know, redesigning uh, local streets, uh, through ways, culverts, that kind of stuff. Uh, so the, uh, if you folks have a chance to review that, we wanted to have it to, probably should have a discussion at our next meeting when we finalize the uh, warrant. Yeah, it's going to be on the next one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, figure out, do we want to go this way or not? That way she can put her efforts on, you know, another another grant. It is a matching grant, but it can be in kind. Mm -hmm. So it was a 10,000, 10, so it would be 10,000 in kind. So her 
hours, uh, my hours, uh, all this other stuff that can be in a time. You get more in there? Your hours, yes. Yeah. 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 And then also she mentioned again the, uh, the three people needed for the uh, Historic Preservation Commission. You know, Ron has already said he wanted to be on it. And I said I'd be on it too just because I was hanging around with Ron every now and then. <laughs> so I didn't know if anybody else wanted to be on that. And that's kind of like it's, it's a single board, but it, you'd have to convene as a town uh, meeting. And then you would, uh, you know, you have to adjourn that one and convene as a village meeting for both entities. So, so she, she asked me to ask you folks if anybody else. Uh, and that was a, an ordinance that was put into place and that expired on the 6th of the year, expires on, the, uh, on Friday. It's effective. It is effective right now? No, it becomes effective Friday, yeah. on the 26th. Yeah. We got a couple of people that get along with you, so we'll hang out together. That's good. Okay. Good thing. Okay. Thanks. Okay. That's all I got. Okay. Uh, public comment. We have some public comment. Usually we don't have public comment. Yeah. Meeting, so. Unless they're complaining about something. Anyway. Nothing being said. We don't need executive session, do we? Item number 13, does somebody want to make a motion? So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to adjourn this village board of trustees meeting uh, for January 22nd. All those in favor of the motion, so you can probably say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you, everyone. This meeting is adjourned.